जय हिंद माई सेल्फ रविंद्र कुमार ए पी इन ई एन डिपार्टमेंट अजय कुमार गर्ग इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज गाजियाबाद टूडे आई एम पेंटिंग ऑन द टॉपिक ट्रांसफॉर्मर दैट इज यूनिट नंबर थ्री इन द सब्जेक्ट फंडामेंटल्स ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजीनियरिंग फॉर विच द सब्जेक्ट कोड इज बी डबल ई वन जीरो वन और टू जीरो वन डिपेंडिंग अपॉन इट इज इन फर्स्ट सेम और सेकेंड सेम एंड दिस सब्जेक्ट इज इंटेंडेड फॉर द स्टूडेंट्स who are taking this subject in first year compulsory courses uh, that is common uh, for all the students now in this topic i will be discussing about ideal transformer in the previous lecture related to this topic of transformer i was uh, i told about different topics like construction of transformer emf equation of transformer and working principle of transformer but in this lecture i will be concentrating or i will be focusing on the ideal transformer and the phasor diagram of ideal transformer plus some numericals related to transformer so if we see in this these are the contents uh we will be discussing about ideal transformer then the phasor diagram of ideal transformer at two different conditions one is at no load and second is at load and then some numericals that those will be taken related to transformer so now in this if we see it first ideal transformer what is ideal transformer so this is ideal two winding transformer if we see it uh this is having two windings this is the diagram for transformer there are the two windings one is this one second one is this and this is the core this is rectangular core uh, this is rectangular core repainting and both the windings they are wound on this common magnetic core this winding at which we are giving ac supply voltage that is known as primary winding or input winding and another winding where we can connect some electrical load across the winding or winding terminals that is known as secondary winding so accordingly we are using symbols like n1 that are that are the number of turns on the primary n2 they are number of turns on secondary e1 is the induced emf in primary e2 is the induced emf in secondary v1 is the voltage applied ac voltage applied across primary v2 is the terminal voltage of secondary which will be available across the load connected across secondary terminals and this phi that represents the flux in the core which is developed when we are passing magnetizing current in the primary winding so all those points already we have discussed in the earlier lecture related to transformer that i have taken so now we are to concentrate here on ideal wind transformer and that is two winding transformer these are the two windings in this so in this there are some assumptions that we can see number one is winding resistance and leakage reactance they are negligible that means these two windings one is this another one is this these are having negligible resistance and leakage reactance which is of inductive nature another assumption is all the flux set up by primary winding that links with the secondary winding that means all the flux is confined in the core or in other words we can say there is no leakage of flux in the ideal transformer and that's why the leakage reactance of the trans ideal transformer is zero since there is no leakage of flux other than this core losses they are negligible copper losses they are also negligible water copper losses which are due to the winding resistance so when a small current is passing through the winding then copper losses can take place but since winding resistance is negligible small that's why copper losses are negligible i square r losses or copper losses they become negligible due to negligible resistance of winding other than that core losses that include uh, hysteresis loss and eddy current loss they are also negligible since uh, there is no leakage of flux plus we select the core material uh, for ideal transformer in such a way 
that copper losses, uh, the uh, copper losses already we have discussed, coal losses, they become negligible. That means, hysteresis loss and eddy current loss, they become negligible. For minimizing the eddy current loss, we laminate the core and for reducing this or minimizing the hysteresis loss, we select the core material in such a way that hysteresis losses become minimum. But in ideal transformer, assumption is that core losses and copper losses, they are negligibly small. Other than this, core has constant permeability. That means, magnetization curve of the core in ideal transformer is linear. Magnetization curve is repented as, here we can take uh, on the two axis, we can take here MMF, which is given by N into I. And at vertical axis, we can take flux phi which is B into A. So, basically this is B H curve since N into I equal to H into L. So, at X axis we ha can have H and at Y axis we, we have B. So, this is basically this becomes B H curve. So, this is linear one for ideal transformer. Passing through origin and this is linear curve. So, these are certain assumptions related to ideal transformer and on the basis of this, we can also say efficiency of the transformer will be 100 percent, reason being different losses, copper loss and core losses, they are negligible and we know efficiency is given by output upon input. This is eta symbol for efficiency that is output upon input and we can write output is input minus losses. So, this is input minus losses upon input. So, when losses are negligibly small for ideal transformer, that time output will be equal to input and efficiency will become 100 percent due to it. And other than that, we can say one more thing, coupling coefficient k, that will be 1. k is given by m upon root L1, L2. Since there is no leakage of flux, so that is why k equal to 1 or we can also say m equal to under root of L1, L2, where m is the mutual inductance between the two windings or between the two sides, while L1 and L2, they are the self inductance of the two sides, primary and secondary. So, these are certain assumptions. That means to say if a transformer that is satisfying all these parameters or all the assumptions, that time that transformer is known as ideal transformer. But Practically, all these assumptions are not possible to be satisfied. That is why ideal transformer does not exist. That is only an assumption that uh, um, these, if these parameters are satisfied, the transformer will become ideal transformer. Now, further we will go for the phasor diagram of ideal transformer for two different cases. One is at no load condition and second one is at load condition. So, if we say it, phasor diagram of ideal transformer on no load. Now, the meaning of load in the case of a transformer, load means here current or power. So, no load means no current or no power. The meaning of it is the secondary side of the transformer will be open. Since when it is open, this secondary is this side, when it is open circuit, so, there is no question of current and when there is no current, then there is no power on the secondary side. That is why secondary is kept open circuit. And on the primary side, we are giving this voltage supply for which the voltage is V1 and uh, V2 is the secondary terminal voltage, E2 is induced EF on secondary, N2 are the number of turns on secondary, N1 are the number of turns on primary, E1 is the induced EF on primary and phi is the flux in the core. So, for primary we are using 1 as subscript with the different quantities and for the secondary side we are using 2 as the subscript for the different quantities. So, that on that basis we are taking quantity on the two sides. So, now if we see in this when we are to draw the phase diagram of this on the horizontal axis or x axis we are taking this flux. Since flux is taken as phi max sin omega t. 
and when the flux in the core is given by this expression, so this is will be this will be along reference since this can be written as sin omega t plus 0 also that will not affect the expression of flux and by seeing it since this is 0 degree angle with omega t. So, that is why it will be along reference direction. Now, after this <coughs> the induced EMF on the two sides E 1 and E 2 they are lagging by 90 degree from flux that already we have derived in the earlier lecture of transformer uh, where we have derived the EMF equation of transformer. The EMF equation of a transformer is given by E equal to E max sin omega t minus 90. That means, the induced EMF is lagging by 90 degree from reference and since flux is along reference that we have seen here, that is why the induced EMF on the two sides that will be lagging by 90 degree from reference or from flux axis. So, that is why E1 and E2 they are taken on this side lagging by 90 degree from flux. Now, other than that E2 will be equal to V2 also E2 equal to V2. Since winding resistance and leakage resistance is 0. So, if there is a flow of current here then there will be no voltage drop, but here it is open circuit again there will be no voltage drop since in open circuit there is no current. So, there is no question of voltage drop that is why E2 and V2 will be equal. So, E2 equal to V2. Now, other than this we are to take primary side phase diagram now. So, in primary side phase diagram this I m that is magnetizing current. The role of this magnetizing current is to set up flux in the core of transformer this flux that is set up with the help of magnetizing current that is the role of magnetizing current to establish or to set up flux in the core of transformer. So, this is magnetizing current this is along flux axis since magnetizing current is given by I m or I phi that is magnetizing current symbol this is given by V 1 upon x phi where V 1 is the voltage at primary side and x phi is the magnetizing reactance of the core. Now, this magnetizing reactance that is of inductive nature and we know in inductance current lags from the voltage by 90 degree. So, this is voltage axis this one is voltage axis. So, current will magnetizing current will be lagging by 90 degree from voltage axis that is why magnetizing current will be on x axis horizontal axis since voltage axis is vertical. So, that is why magnetizing current will be along this side or along this axis. Now, another thing V 1 will be equal to minus E 1. Reason being whatever is the induced EF on primary that is E 1 same will be magnitude of V 1 also which is the voltage applied from on primary side. Reason being here whatever is the current passing on this side primary side there will be no voltage drop and the reason for that is winding resistance and leakage resistance they are negligible. So, there is no voltage drop due to it and that is why the magnitude of V 1 and E 1 will be equal, but since V 1 is the applied voltage and E 1 is the induced EF that is why V 1 will oppose E 1 and uh, as per Lenz law. So, V 1 will be minus E 1 due to it since it is opposite of it. So, E 1 is vertically downward that already we have discussed why it is there since it is lagging by 90 degree from flux axis. So, V 1 which is minus E 1. So, that is in length V 1 length will be equal to E 1 length, but opposite of E 1 that is why V 1 is on vertically upward side and this is equal to minus E 1. So, that way it is a phasor diagram of this ideal transformer at no load condition that means, the secondary of the transformer is open circuit there is no load connected at secondary side that is the meaning of it. Other than that we can also say V 1 leads phi by 90 degree uh, as per this phasor diagram since V 1 is on positive vertical side and flux is on horizontal side that is why V 1 is leading by 90 degree from flux axis and uh, this magnetizing current that is lagging from V 1 by 90 degree that is why V 1 is on vertical axis uh, positive vertical side. So, magnetizing current I m or I phi that will be along horizontal axis and this is primary current also which is passing through the primary side or primary winding in this case. 
So this is about the failure diagram of ideal transformer at no load condition. Now for the same transformer, that means for ideal transformer, if we connect some load at secondary side, that time we will draw the failure diagram of this transformer at load condition. So if we go for it, the failure diagram of ideal transformer at load. So here we will be connecting some load, electrical load at the secondary side. So we can represent the transformer as this is single phase two winding transformer, this is primary side and this is secondary side and these two vertical lines, they are representing the common magnetic core on which both the sides are wound, primary as well as secondary. This is primary side we are taking, so voltage will be connected here, supply voltage, which is sinusoidal AC voltage, V1, induced EMF is E1 on this side, and N1 are the number of turns on this side, N2 are the number of turns on secondary side, E2 is the induced EMF on secondary side. Now at these terminals, we are connecting electrical load. Since we are having load condition, this time for the ideal transformer and due to it a current I2 will be passing in the secondary side. Since now the circuit is not open at the secondary, there is some load connected at secondary side and V2 is the voltage across load which is also known as terminal voltage of secondary side. So in this case, what will happen when we are drawing the failure diagram? First we see flux, flux is taken along reference axis that we have dis discussed in the previous case when we have discussed the failure diagram of ideal transformer in no load condition. So flux is along reference axis. Now the induced EMF on the two sides E1 and E2, they are lagging by 90 degree from flux that also we have discussed in the previous case. So same thing is here that E1 and E2 they will be lagging by 90 degree from flux. So, E1 and E2 will be taken on this side. They are lagging by 90 degree from flux axis. This angle is 90 degree. Now, other than this, E2 will be equal to V2 here also, region being when Secondary winding is having some current due to complete circuit in secondary by connecting load at secondary side, but there will be no voltage drop due to this current and the reason for that is secondary winding and primary winding for both resistance and leakage reactance, they are negligibly small or zero. So there is no question of voltage drop due to the passage of current in the two sides, primary and secondary. So that's why E2 will be equal to V2 in this case also. And if this load is of inductive nature, that means it may be just like RL type of load, combination of resistance and inductance, R and L. So that time this current I2, that will be lagging, uh, I2 is load current, that will be lagging from load voltage by some angle. So I2 will be taken on this side, lagging from load voltage V2 by some angle. Suppose this angle is theta 2. This theta 2 will be given by tan inverse x2 by r2. Where x2 is the uh, inductive reactance of the load and r2 is the resistance of the load. So, this current load current i2 that is lagging by angle theta 2 from load voltage V2 and V2 is E2. That already we have discussed why since there is no voltage drop due to the current I2 in secondary, 
and the reason for that is that winding resistance and leakage resistance they are zero or negligible small. So, theta 2 will be given by this. Now, if we see on the primary side, since we have considered all the quantities on secondary side, now if we go for the primary side, in primary side what will be there? One current I phi that is magnetizing current or also known as I m, I phi or I m. That is the symbol for magnetizing current that will be there along flux axis that already we have discussed in the previous slide why it is along flux axis. Now, another current will also be there here that will be I 1 dash. I 1 dash will also be there in the primary and I 1 dash will be known as load component of primary current. This current will only be there in the primary side when secondary side is having some load connected. Otherwise, if secondary side is open circuit, that means there is no load connected at secondary side. That time this I1 dash will not be there in primary. I1 dash that is why it is known as load component of primary current. Uh, that means this will only be there in primary when load is connected at secondary side. Otherwise, in no load condition. I 1 dash will not be there. That is why it is known as load component of primary current. And this current will be in phasor opposition to I 2. That means, the angle between I 1 dash and I 2 will be 180 degree. This angle is 180 degree. They are in phasor opposition from each other. And why they are in phasor opposition? The reason for that is when I 2 is the current passing in the secondary, due to it some MMF will be associated in the secondary which will be given by N 2 into I 2. And if you divide it N 2 into I 2 by reluctance of the core, then we will get flux in the secondary. And as per Lenz law, this flux which is developed in the secondary due to this of uh, uh, current in the secondary, this flux will apply the main flux as per Lenz law and that will try to reduce the main flux or that will try to re reduce the variation in main flux, but we want main flux to remain as it is and for that purpose primary winding will draw additional current from the supply that will be known as load component of primary current and due to that additional flux will be developed in the primary which will cancel out the secondary flux. So, that is why additional flux will be developed in the secondary which will be given by N 1 I 1 dash upon reluctance. This is the flux developed in primary which will be equal to the flux in secondary, but this will cancel out the secondary flux. So, that the main flux phi that will not be affected that will remain as it is and for this to happen I 1 dash should be 180 degree away from I 2. So, that the flux due to I 1 dash and flux due to I 2 they will be in opposite to each other and in magnitude they will be equal by this relation. So, that they, these two fluxes will cancel out each other and net main flux in the core phi that will not be affected that will remain as it is. So, that is why I 1 dash will be along this side. Now, the phasor sum of I phi and I 1 dash that will become primary current in this case. So, primary current I 1 that will be phasor sum of I phi and I 1 dash in which I phi is magnetizing current the role of which already we have discussed to set up flux in the core of transformer and I 1 dash is load component of primary current and phasor sum of these two becomes resultant primary current I 1. So, that way we have it. So, now if we take the phasor sum of I phi and I 1 dash, we can take it with the help of parallelogram. So, what we do? We complete this parallelogram. Now, this is I 1. This is 
by completing this parallelogram, the diagonal of this parallelogram that becomes I1. So, this is primary current. So, this is all about this phasor diagram for ideal transformer at load condition. One more quantity that will be shown here that is supply voltage V1, which will be equal to E1 in magnitude again as earlier, but with opposite sign. Since V1 will be E1 region being, there will be no voltage drop in the primary also due to the flow of current I1 in primary. Since again the region is same, winding resistance and leakage reactance are negligibly small due to ideal transformer. So, induce EMF E1 and supply voltage V1, they will be of same magnitude, but with opposite sign. Since V1 is the applied voltage across primary, while E1 is the induced EMF in primary. So, as per Lenz law, V1 and E1, they will oppose each other. So, V1 equal to minus E1. So, that will be here. Since E1 is vertically downward, so V1 will be vertically upward. So, this is all the quantities we have included on the two sides. Uh, uh, that means on primary and secondary side in this phasor diagram. So, this is all about the phasor diagram of ideal transformer in this case on load condition. So, next we have some numericals related to the transformer that we can see. Uh, this is a VA rating of transformer that means volt ampere rating of transformer. We know uh, the rating of transformer is given in volt ampere since the various losses which are taking place in a transformer, they are independent of power factor. Uh, basically, there are two types of losses, one is copper loss, another one is core loss. Copper losses that depend upon square of the current passing through the transformer secondary and primary, while uh, core losses or iron losses that, that are dependent upon frequency and square of the applied voltage. Uh, so, in both these type of losses, copper losses as well as core losses, they are independent from power factor. So, the product of voltage and current that means volt ampere, that way we define the power rating of a transformer. So, that is why the power rating of a transformer is given in volt ampere or VA rating we call it. So, V1 into I1 divided by 1000 that becomes KVA rating on primary side. Since V1 is the primary side voltage. I1 is the primary side current, while V2 I2 by 1000 that is KVA rating on secondary side since V2 and I2 they are the secondary voltage and current and these two are equal V1 I1 by 1000 equal to V2 I2 by 1000 since they are negligible losses in the transformer. So, that is why KVA rating on the two side they are almost same. <coughs> now, for example, we take this numerical a single phase 50 hertz transformer has 80 turns on the primary side and 400 turns on the secondary side. The net cross-sectional area of the core is 200 centimeter square. If the primary winding is connected to a 240 volt 50 hertz supply, find EMF induced in the secondary side and the maximum value of the flux density in the core. So, what are the data given in this question? 50 hertz that is the frequency of the supply that is given, number of turns on the primary N1 that are 80 that are given, this is N1 equal to 80, supply frequency is 50 hertz. Similarly, number of turns on secondary side that are 400 and 2 that are given to us, cross sectional area of the core that is 200 centimeter square that is this. So, that becomes 200 into 10 raise to power minus 4 meter square. Other than that, induced EMF on the primary side that is given to us. 240 volt E1 that is given. Now, with the transformation ratio which is K given by N2 upon N1. So, putting the value of N2 and N1 in this that is 480, this becomes 5 upon 1 and this is also equal to E2 upon E1 that is the ratio equation we know. So, uh, from this we can write E2 equal to 5 into E1 and E1 is 240. So, E2 becomes 5 into 240 that becomes 1200 volt and uh, we know E1 is given by E1 is the RMS value on primary side induced EMF that is given by root 2 pi f N1 into 5 max where N1 is the number of turns on primary side 
एंड फाइव एक्स इज द मैक्सिम वैल्यू ऑफ फ्लक्स लिंकिंग विद द कोर सो रूट टू पाई बिकम्स फोर पॉइंट फोर फोर सो दिस इवन बिकम्स फोर पॉइंट फोर फोर एफ फाइव एम इन टू एन वन सो इवन इज वी नो द वैल्यू ऑफ इवन विच इज टू फोर्टी तो दैट बिकम्स फोर पॉइंट फोर फोर इंटू फिफ्टी इंटू फाइव एम इंटू एन वन सिंस द वैल्यू ऑफ एन वन इज एट्टी दैट ऑलरेडी वी नो एंड एफ इज फिफ्टी हर्ट्स दैट ऑलरेडी वी नो सो फ्रॉम दिस वी कैन फाइंड फाइव एम सो फाइव एम कम्स आउट एज ऑन कैलकुलेशन वी गेट दिस वैल्यू पॉइंट जीरो वन थ्री फाइव वन वेबर दैट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ मैक्सिमम फ्लक्स एंड फ्रॉम दिस वी कैन फाइंड मैक्सिमम वैल्यू ऑफ फ्लक्स डेंसिटी बी मैक्स बी एम दैट बिकम्स फाइव एम अपॉन ए मैक्सिम फ्लक्स अपॉन क्रॉस सेक्शनल एरिया सो पुटिंग द वैल्यू ऑफ फाइव एम हियर एंड ए इन दिस वी गेट मैक्सिम वैल्यू ऑफ फ्लक्स डेंसिटी दैट कम्स आउट एज पॉइंट सिक्स सेवन फाइव सिक्स वेबर पर मीटर स्क्वायर विच इज द यूनिट ऑफ फ्लक्स डेंसिटी सो दैट वे वी सॉल्व दिस टाइप ऑफ न्यूमेरिकल्स इन ट्रांसफॉर्मर वन मोर एग्जाम्पल वी कैन हैव रिलेटेड टू इट दिस एग्जाम्पल फॉर ए सिंगल फेज ट्रांसफॉर्मर Having primary and secondary turns of 440 and 880 respectively, that means n1 is 440 and n2 is 880. Find the transformer rating in kVa or kVa rating of transformer if half load secondary current is 7.5 ampere and maximum value of core flux is 2.25 milliweber. So we are given n1 equal to 440. N2 equal to 880. Half of full load current is 7.5 ampere, and maximum value of flux is 2.25 milliweber. So from this equation, E2 equal to 4.44 into 5 max into F into N2. What we do? We can find the value of E2 from here. This becomes 4.44 into 2.25, which is the value of 5 max. 2.25 milliweber, so we convert it to the weber. 2.25 into 10 to the power minus 3, that becomes in weber. Into F, which is 50, into N2, which is 880, given in the question. So E2 comes out as 439.56 volt. That is the induced EMF on secondary side. Now secondary side full load current, that will be given by KVA rating divided by E2. Now half of full load current, that means half of Full load current that we are getting, so this becomes half of full load current I2, that is half of full load current I2. So this will be half of well, uh, we put the value of full load current, uh, secondary full load current, which is KVA rating upon E2 from here. So half of full load current we are given 7.5, so this becomes 1 by 2 into KVA rating upon value of E2, which already we have found on calculation for 39.56 volt. So by putting this value here, we get KVA rating as this: two into seven point five into four thirty nine point five six into ten to the power minus three for converting it to KVA. If we do not multiply it from ten uh, by ten to the power minus three, then this will become volt ampere rating. So by multiplying from ten to the power minus three, this becomes KVA rating, and on calculation we get it six point five nine three four KVA. So Ultimately, the KV rating of the transformer comes out as 6.5934 KVA on calculation. So that way we solve this numerical for the transformer. So that's all about this lecture today. In the next lecture, we will be discussing the next topic, that is the phasor diagram of a practical transformer, which is different from ideal transformer. That means all the assumptions that we have taken for ideal transformer, those transformer. Uh, those assumptions they will be ignored of one by one in case of practical transformer since all those assumptions they become invalid for practical transformer practical transformer or transformer or we can say non ideal transformer so those things will be discussed in the next lecture thanks for this